I'm Brian Wood, Technical Communications and Outreach Manager at Wolfram. I'm here today with Leo Laguna Ruiz, a software engineer for Wolfram System Modeler. How are you today, Leo? Hello, I'm fine. Everything's good. Been good. Excellent. Uh, Leo's going to talk a little bit about how he uses System Modeler to model analog audio synthesizers, um, which some, some musicians out there might recognize more colloquially as uh, just a synth. Um, so why don't we start off with just a little bit of background. For anyone who may not be into music or may not really have heard of this before, uh, what exactly do you mean when you say analog synthesizer? Well, uh, so in no, we know that, that music and sound is, is produced by waves, right? So in the 70s or maybe early 60s, uh, the people start, started uh, designing these new electric circuits in order to to try to replicate the sounds. And the way they were, they were approaching it, it was uh, by creating the, the synthesizers, which uh, I, I like to see as, as analog computers, because you have like uh, oscillators that generate waveforms, filters, uh, amplifiers, in order to control the, the, the level of, of, the, of, the, of these waveforms. Right. And combining all this, uh, it was possible to to generate uh, sounds that in the beginning tried to imitate the existing sounds, but uh, it ended up creating a new a whole new category of sounds that that we never hear before. And all that equipment from the seventies and up to the eighties, it was it was uh, an analog electronics. Right. So that's uh, so basically, it's sending an electrical signal through. And sort of just manipulating it to to become something you know something that's been altered, and then creating a sound out of that. Uh, so I, I like the way you say that. Yeah, it's it's like an analog computer because you're sort of just um, it's you're not computing something explicitly. It's just that the electronics themselves are actually sort of doing those processes and and manipulating it themselves. Um, so. Where where would most people have heard uh, a synthesizer? I mean, what what kinds of places would people might uh, might people recognize this from? Yeah, I mean, probably nowadays, if you have listened to any song released in the last uh, twenty years, you have heard a synthesizer. Uh, but there are a few songs that have like a like a very recognizable synthesizer sound. Mm -hmm. uh, if, for example, just coming to to my mind, Daft Punk. They use a lot of synthesizers uh, yes. uh, or samples of synthesizers. So they they uh, they produce electronic music, and and mostly the sounds are synthesized. But yeah, nowadays I guess that every song has some part that is synthesized or that is processed using some kind of uh, digital signal processing. Right, right, yeah, and I think that that's something um, a lot of people probably don't realize about the music that they hear is that. Uh, a lot of those sounds are, are either entirely sort of uh, made up, like like they are not uh, an actual sound that's made by you know hitting things together or anything like that, um, and and the the parts that aren't entirely made up are are uh, fairly heavily processed in a lot of cases. Yeah. So, um, so what tell us a little bit about what it is that you're doing with uh, with System Modeler in this, right. in this scenario. Since, um, one since many many years back, uh, I, I I've been interested in music technology, and, and that same road uh, led me to, to to study electrical engineering, and that led me to to start uh, I, to get interested in simulations and creating models, and that's how I ended up uh, working in system model uh, because I really like. Uh, simulations and creating mathematical models right and at, at some point since music has always been in a, like a passion for me I, I started trying to combine these these two things like okay i'm going to use the product that i'm developing to do something interesting and at the same time testing <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely so uh so you're building these you're essentially just modeling the the circuits that make up an analog synthesizer is that right right so uh, the one one nice characteristic of the analog synthesizers is that uh, 
I mean, if, if, here I'm comparing them with with the digital, purely digital versions. The analog synthesizers, since they are made with transistors, uh, operational amplifiers, all these components uh, are a bit imperfect. And that imperfection it affects a lot the, the resulting sound. So if, if I make exactly the same, uh, going back to the analogy of the, of the analog computer mm -hmm. uh, versus a digital computer. So nowadays, if, if you want precision in your calculations, you will use a digital computer. You are, you are not going to use <laughs> a, an analog computer. Right, right. But, what ha but in, in sound, it's a little bit different because the analog computers had these imperfections that, that shape the sound, that change how the, the sound work. And, and it just, and it, and, it's, and it is more appealing for, for uh, well, for musicians yeah, yeah. and um, also people like me. So th th that's how I got interested in, into trying to understand how, how these circuits work. And once I, I understood how, how this circuit works, uh, I started creating digital versions that try to, to imitate that sound without mm -hmm. losing, losing uh, the nice characteristics in the transition to digital. Right. Yeah. And, and that's uh, kind of a unicorn, I think, in the uh, in the audio world, because there's this there's that back and forth between, you know, digital versus analog audio. And there's the, the sort of psychoacoustics that effects that you're talking about, where there are maybe some imperfections in the analog audio that people actually prefer. Um, so it's it is kind of a uh, a really unique thing to be able to take that analog version and turn it into a digital thing that still maintains those those sort of imperfections um right so um why don't we why don't we take a look uh i know you've got a couple of things that you can show us here um and in particular i, I was kind of curious to see what kind of what your workflow looks like it within system modeler so why don't you why don't you go ahead and show us your notebook that you've got here so with, within system modeler what, what I usually do is, is uh, like taking a schematic or, or, or even my own designs. Mm -hmm. And inside System Model, I started creating like my own library of components that, that model the, the components that I was using. And then it was very easy to just put them together and, and start running simulations to see how my model sound compared to the, to, to the analog version. So, and once I, I, I get like this simulation model, which is efficient because that, that's, that's another very important thing. The model not only needs to be uh, good, sounding good, but it also right. needs to be efficient. So that means that sometimes I have to drop the complexity of, of, the, of the components. Like mm -hmm. in the case of, a, of an operational amplifier, which consists of many transistors, I can probably model it in a in a simpler way that that keeps the characteristics that sh that are important to the sound. Oh, so okay. with with system model, I I can uh, change the level of modeling. I started with a with a very complex model, and then uh, making experiments. For example, what 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 will happen if I make a simpler model? Does it still sounds good? And if it sounds good. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it would be more efficient. And then I can start like dropping, dropping, dropping the, the, the level of detail in order to find like this perfect yeah, okay. sweet spot which, in which you have a, a model that sounds good and is also efficient. Uh, and, yeah, interesting. And, and that, that's part of, of, the, of the work that I do with System Modeler. Uh, and once, once I have like a model that works, uh, I use Mathematica to, to extract these equations because uh, as you can see here, I, this, mm -hmm. is like a, this is a graphical model. At this point, I'm doing. I'm still following the abstractions of, of electronics, right? And then I can use Mathematica to get all the equations of this system, and start doing more manipulations on those equations in order to 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 optimize the the system, and, and trying to perform the minimal set of computations necessary in order to to simulate it. And right. and that's a, that's like a uh, as loop that I that I have to do in order to to get right. uh, the simplest system that reproduces the the, the original the original sound. And yeah, once once I have this reduced set of equations, I I implement those those equations in in a 
in a DSP language that, that I that I designed, which generates C++ code that I can simply compile into a traditional audio plugin. Cool, very interesting. So so it seems like that would almost be useful for um, for sort of creating uh, simpler versions of, of the actual and the actual physical things too. Like you, you could sort of simplify that model and then, uh, you know, instead of having to build up the original thing, you, you sort of have uh, fewer, fewer pieces maybe that you can, that, I mean, does that, do, do you do that with, with hardware as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, I actually do. And uh, so what happens is that uh, uh, when you are dropping level of detail, Probably uh, it, it has happened to me before that I'm, I'm dropping level of detail and then I find something that sounds different but still sounds very good. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not bad by all by, by any means. Right. And and sometimes I've just released like alternative versions of the same of the same circuit uh, that that maybe do not have all the characteristics but they are still very good as uh, as sound generators and probably more more efficient. So yeah, it, and and it helped me to to fix the the mistakes on well i don't want to call it mistakes because they are not right but the limitations of of a of a circuit sure okay because yeah, for me uh, it's very easy just to change a component in, in the schematic and then just rerun the whole processing right yeah R rather than having to you know resolder and and switch yeah. things around and Sure. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, so it seems like you use kind of both system modeler and Wolfram language, um, like you said, as a sort of back and forth uh, before finalizing these projects. Uh, can, can you talk just a little bit about like the features that make that possible? Because I know that this is the integration between those two ha has been sort of built up yes. over the last couple of years. So. Yeah, that that's the, the the biggest advantage. If if you take like any other simulator, or a traditional simulator using for electrical circuits, uh, once you have your simulation circuit, it's very hard to get the equations from it. Mm -hmm. And and with Wolfram language and system model, this integration is just one command, and I get like list of hundreds of equations, and and then I can easily reduce them to to a, to a dozen or less less equations so yeah that that uh, that will i will say that is that the biggest feature being able of of taking a graphical a graphical model where where i didn't have to deal with any equations and just immediately translating it into into equations that i can still manipulate right so you can you've got the uh, sort of the modeling and then the analysis built into the same workflow so you don't have to switch between systems and stuff like that. Yes, yes. Very nice, very nice. Um, so why don't, we, why don't we go ahead and um, I understand you've got at least a, a quick sample for us that you can show to kind of kind of give people an idea of the kinds of things that you might build with this system. Yes, I should have something here. Uh, so this is, a, this is a short video that, um, that I made uh, using the modules that I, that I, that I create. And the idea with this uh, patch it was to create something ambient that uh, it, con it, uh, it considers randomness. It, it integrates random randomness and chaos mm -hmm. in order to generate the music. So what I did is is just setting the rules of the sound, but the the sound is being generated uh, randomly. I'm gonna play.
Yeah, so I, I, I really like this example um, because of that, that randomness that you're talking about. It's like every every time you think you know what it's doing, it sort of morphs and changes just a little bit. That's, so this this is the, the kind of thing that someone might hear, uh, for instance, maybe in the in the background of a movie or, or something where it's very ambient and you know, give, gives you kind of a mood, but without really adding melody. Right, uh, and I, I can stop it because it, one of the nice things about this is that it can last forever. Sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's gonna be constantly evolving. Yeah, and, and it's uh, sort of a, a different experience every time, right? Like every time you go through that process, it's gonna give you a slightly different result and it'll, it'll sort of morph in slightly different ways. So that's, uh, yeah, that, that to me is really interesting stuff. Um, Excellent. Well, um, uh, this this has been a really great chat. Um, it's it, to me a, a, an excellent example of that kind of blend of technical knowledge and creativity that we really like to see at Wolfram. Um, so, if anyone if anyone's interested in what Leo's doing here, you can go to uh, Volt DSP. That's V U L T DSP dot com. Uh, check out some of his work. Uh, and you mentioned that this VCV rack is something that you do you use. Um, and uh, actually, you you could go ahead and show uh, your your website if you don't mind. Yeah, I, I actually um, have it here. Uh, this is the website, and here you will find the, the software that I make, uh, also the programming language that I developed for the DSP, and also like some of the hardware that I make because uh, at the end. Uh, all, all these models that, that I make uh, of analog synthesizers specifically for filters, I can uh, bring them back to the hardware world. So I, I, I spend a lot of time uh, turning these electrical circuits into mathematical models to have them in software, oh. but then, <laughs> then I, will, I will put them back into a, into a convenient package, uh, which will be uh, like one of the a filter. Yeah, so this is a, I should have a picture here. Okay, so this one, it's, it's, a, it's a hardware module that is fully digital, but it emulates many different filters. So all these models uh, that I have developed, they, they run in, inside that one, and, and it's very convenient just to uh, loop around them and find the one that you like. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, an impressive amount of options on, on just a very small package. Pretty interesting. So, uh, so you've got software and hardware then that it basically uh, everything that you've sort of built and uh, developed and modeled uh, through this process. Right. Right. Cool. So um, anyone, anyone interested, like I said, uh, vault dspcom um, and again, uh, we, we had, didn't really get a chance to go through it, but, uh, VCV rack is, is the tool that you're using for, uh, for, to, for testing these. Is that right? What, what exactly yes, is it's, it? I mean, it's, it's the main, the main tool I use to, to test and develop and also to distribute. Uh, if, mm -hmm. if you download VCV rack, uh, you can find uh, for free, uh, like most of the, of the modules that I have made. And the ones that I use in, in the, the demo before. Right on. So uh, uh, vcvrack.com, you can, you can check that out. And uh, anyone who's interested in doing what Leo has done, uh, obviously, you can, you can go to wolfram.com, find out more about System Modeler and Wolfram Language. Um, you get that, that full modeling analysis workflow like Leo was talking about. And um, I, think, uh, I think that's all we've got today. So uh, thanks a lot for talking with me, Leo. No, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. You can check out other Wolfram Tech Talks, live coding streams, and more on the Wolfram Research YouTube channel, or see what else is new at wolfram.com.